assistance. Today in this video, I am covering the SMCU drive and how to determine if a drive is bad. Now, of course, you can see the drive is already powered up. I've got a 48 volt power supply similar to what you'd be using yourself in house. And the idea here is simplicity. When I say simplicity, you can see we have the LED on the motherboard signifying the board itself is getting power. You can see here we have an LED on A axis drive. We have no LED on our Z-axis drive, LED on our Y-axis drive, and LED on our X-axis drive. And when these LEDs are flashing, that is totally normal, nothing is connected. That's essentially what they're telling you. So when we see an LED not on, naturally, that's telling you that drive is the one that would require replacement only if you've done all troubleshooting steps by either contacting me or reading the manual or a combination of both in order to determine that the drive requires replacement. Now, an integrated drive, the beauty of it is the fact that these MST-109 drives plug right into the motherboard. You can see right here, we've got male terminals. And then over here on the board, we have the female terminals, and these just plug right in, similar to how you'd replace a PC video card or a similar uh, component on a PC motherboard. That is the beauty of this. Very, very minimal wiring. Matter of fact, the only four leads you will be having to swap would be just carrying over what leads are connected for your motors and that would just go into this terminal block here that has uh, four leads once again. So very, very simple format, integrated heat sink and the only thing that would be required in order to swap out the drive is removing these countersunk head Phillips head screws and there's only two of them. Okay, now in this particular instance where this axis is bad, we can see why, or your reset on your Z is over here. So your Z axis is right here and there's one of the bolts and then one of them is on the inside. And while it looks tight, it's really not that bad because these are not really tight at all. You can actually uh, do this very carefully with a nice set of needle nose pliers. And why do I say needle nose pliers? Because you have very minimal clearance and once again these are more or less finger tight because they're not required to do anything. You're not bolting anything on. You're certainly not using excessive force. Once again ham fisting here is not required. And the big thing here is that now that we've determined which drive requires replacement we will just unplug power naturally to the drive. That's all set. And then we would go about unscrewing these screws. So what I'm gonna do now is I will unscrew these screws and I will cut back in as soon as I'm done and showing you how to swap it out and then once again connect the motor leads and that's it. Okay guys, I've already got the new drive basically installed. Once again, all you've got is these four leads and that's to go to your GX16 on the front and that once again is for your motor. So we've got blue, red, black, yellow and naturally you'd follow the same wiring pattern of the colors on from the remaining drives that have already been installed and not touched. Very, very simple. Put a wire tie here to keep things neat. And once again, she can definitely shoot these female plugs and that's exactly how the drive just simply slides in the spot. So what I'm gonna do is just clear my capacitor on the Y axis, come over here very carefully and we'll just slide this down. And we should be in business. You'll hear a click, and that's it. Once that goes in, that is it, my friends. And that's fully seated, and you can see right here, we're looking for that virtually to have no gap. Everything there should be good. It's very, very tight proximity, and you'll see your holes line up right down here. Everything is set, then we can reorganize everything. And I'll just go in and mount those two screws, show you exactly how that's done. Once again, those screws on the bottom are countersunk, so the drive will sit totally flat once the screws are holding in the drives. Very, very simple process. And once again, beats the hell out of wiring or rewiring a drive that you had to remove and dig into a system, it's a mess. All right, guys, you can see here, and I'm doing this for anyone just getting involved with this genre, to understand the gravity 
of what it is to build an individual drive system, also known as an IDS system. You can see here we've got four Gecko G203V drives, and this entire system, minus your fan and minus your power supply, would not have to be manually built as the SMCU is an integrated drive. Now the G540 is the same thing. Why anyone would want to put themselves through all this work, I have no idea, especially when once again, I've already covered the benefits, you guys can see for yourself, just how fast it is to work with that drive. But keep in mind what you see here, with all this intricate wiring, all the wire guides, everything else that you see in the background we've got relays he's going to have a breakout board he's got all the leads individually run to each drive which of course each drive requires 12 leads just to wire an individual drive so if you have four of that do the math we're looking at 48 leads just to wire a four axis systems drives only that doesn't include the power supply that doesn't include the power switch. That doesn't include all the accessory wiring. So when you think about it, and if you're doing it correctly, the way I've shown in my videos where I use solder and flux, think about the amount of time. Once again, it's a point of logic. There are some individuals who still want to do this. That's fine. I'm just trying to give you guys the easiest format to hit the ground running to get that business going or to automate whatever machine you have because something like this will easily take you at least two to three weeks at minimum to get anywhere where this will even be ready to be powered up for most individuals. So this definitely gets things moving in a much faster direction. Okay, I'll show you the finished product when we're done. Okay guys, you can see now our Z-axis has been installed, everything is set, and I'm going to tell you truthfully, between the needle nose, the fine tip needle nose, and I also use auto close tweezers. If you don't have a set of these, I highly recommend you get them, because when you're working in tight spaces, these just auto close, and once again, make your life a hell of a lot easier. Very, very cheap tool, one of those ones that you can't live without when you need it. Needless to say, for the tight space, everything is in. You can see the bolts are all done. It came out beautiful. This drive is now ready to go back to the client. And best of all, we can do a quick test. And we can see all LEDs are now illuminated. Done. That's how soon this can be up and running again. And once again, even if you consider working in a meticulous spot like that, that's nothing compared to having to pull out any type of wire guides and going through all that mishmash mess of trying to get that drive that's buried in your system. And that's why I say integrated drives are amazing, especially considering the SMCU has two built-in relays, a segregated uh, step-down power supply for logic. I mean, we're looking and once again, cutting edge features. Here's all your inputs. And again, we do have an LPH26 connector. And I get this question a lot, and I just want to make sure everyone is well aware. Yes, you can use this with a Masso. So if you want crazy expandability, this is amazing, especially considering these drives, these MST109s, do support up to nine amp motors, and yes, that means they will support a NEMA 42 motor with ease. So if you're retrofitting a large mill, this is the drive you'll want to go with. Okay, so keep that in mind of, again, its capability. It is really the most amazing integrated drive on the market right now. Not because, once again, I've had a hand in designing it, but just a feature set. Look at how simple this is. Once again, dual relays, you do have PWM control, you've got all your inputs. Realistically, there's nothing else you could really add here. So thinking about that, it's pretty amazing what you can do with this. You can retrofit virtually any size production robot um, from everything from a knee mill all the way down to a 6040 and still have that expanding option later on to take it to the next level. So, 
Once again, I hope that this video has been helpful. Any guys looking at this drive or thinking about an integrated drive in general, whether it be this or G540, keep that in mind when you're building your system. I cannot emphasize enough how many times clients get back with me and say, hey Vin, you know you were so right. I went from an IDS, individual drive system, and I had a drive fail and it sucked. I had to go through, get it out of the system. I was down for a couple hours. I went with a G540 or I went with an SMCU and all of a sudden I changed the drive and I'm up and running again within 15, 20 minutes. So super easy, that's the goal. And once again, ultimate options as far as expandability. Thank you guys all for your support. I hope the video helped. Take care.